the best electric cars to get in 2022. Now this year really has been the year of the electric car for me. I've reviewed more electric cars in the last 12 months than I have in the entire over 30 years that I've been reviewing cars. And that's partly because what we always suspected would happen has happened. And that is that the mainstream major manufacturers got serious about EVs. Now this is not the place to discuss the pros and cons of electric cars. I have done that in previous videos. I know it's a subject of ongoing intense debate. Uh, there are valid arguments on both sides. However, like it or not, electric cars are happening. Now I've been something of an electric car skeptic myself in the past. I still think they're only part of the solution to our transport issues and not the sole answer, as some would believe. But I also accept that they are inevitable, they are here, and that they are actually rather good. Tesla is undoubtedly widely responsible for making electric cars sexy, fun and desirable. And they certainly made it hay until now, but as I said, the major car makers are now almost all offering EVs and they have decades of proper car making experience. The following lineup of the best electric cars to buy in 2022 are based on my own experiences with these cars. There are no Teslas on this list because as an organization they don't seem to be very journalist friendly and have made it just too difficult to review them. So which ones did I select? We'll find out right after this. So here are my top 6 electric cars that you should consider buying in 2022 in reverse order plus I'll add a bonus rather special perhaps unexpected and certainly controversial suggestion at the end. By the way the links to view the individual review videos for each of these cars will be in the description below. Now at number 6 is the Volvo XC40 Recharge Electric. I just recently drove this car and the reason it's on this list is that it's rather unassuming as an electric car. What I mean by that is that apart from a blanked out grille and missing exhaust tailpipes, you can't really tell this apart from the regular XC40. And yet it's highly competent with reasonable but not overwhelming performance and useful range. Get this if you don't want to shout about going electric. At number 5 is the Mini Electric. Now like the Volvo, this one also closely resembles its normal engine siblings. Though you might well miss the raspy engine note and being able to rip through the manual gears yourself. However, it's very likely the replacement of this car is also going to be all electric. A bit like what Fiat has done with the new 500, which I haven't driven yet. So this is precedent. And it's not a practice run, it's proof of concept. Plus, the Mini seems to feel right as an EV, particularly as an urban runabout. Number 4, the Citroen Ami. Talking of urban runabouts, I drove this before it was confirmed as going on sale in the UK. When it does, it'll probably be one of the cheapest EVs that you can buy uh, at probably around £6,000. But it's classed as a quadricycle. It won't go very fast or very far. In fact, viewed in purely logical terms, you'll wonder why it's even on the list. This is about as bare back to the basics as you can get in a new car. And they've even skimped on panels. The front and the rear of the car are exactly the same. But the simplicity, old school charm and just the sheer laugh out loud enjoyability of this thing makes it a winner. At number 3, the Audi e-tron. As I said in my review, if it's good enough for Tony Iron Man Stark, then it's good enough for me and for you. Now this is the car that he drove in Avengers Endgame well ahead of the car's actual launch. It's basically a Porsche Taycan, but you know what? I prefer the sharp pursuit on this thing. Plus, it's more laid back and charismatic as well as being lethally effective when you want it to be. A lot like Tony Stark. At number 2 is the Kia EV6. Korea got real with EVs this year. First with the Hyundai Ioniq 5, which by all accounts is brilliant. I haven't had a chance to try it yet. But more recently with the same car's Kia sibling, the EV6. You know it's an EV because it has EV in the title. But joking aside, it's damn good. A genuinely usable range, quality unrecognizable to drivers of Kias from say a decade ago, decent performance and superb practicality. You know, if I had to have an electric family car, this would be right up there on my shopping list. Except for the fact that there is one other car. At number one, the Ford Mustang Mach-E. At first I really struggled with the concept of this being called a Mustang, but now I get it. This is Ford's first dedicated all-electric car, all new from the ground up and entirely separate from anything else in their portfolio. If it had been called anything else, it would be just another new EV offering on the market. 
but by calling it the Mustang, two things happened. First, the controversy behind the naming got people talking about the car. And as they say, there's no such thing as bad publicity, unless you've been cancelled, of course. Secondly, they could give it some pony badges and make the styling a little more interesting by endowing it with a few Mustang design cues. Plus, the Mustang identity is so strong, it doesn't even have a single Ford badge on it. I'd been calling it a Mackie when I had it, but when I was driving it through London, some guys shouted from across the road, whoa, that's the new Mustang, isn't it? And they weren't taking the mic either. It's also genuinely enjoyable to drive. And finally, and most crucially in this case, it's cool because it is ultimately a Mustang as Ford calls it, and they have the right to do so because it is their brand. And somehow that does just make it kind of special. If I had to have an electric car, it would be this one. So I promised a bonus choice. At this point, some of you might switch away from this video because I'm about to bring up a new trend in the classic car world. Call them electromods, retroelectrics. It's about converting classic cars to electric. What? Why? Why would you do that? Okay, okay. I admit that maybe all classics are not ideal candidates for conversion. However, I've been looking at this quite a lot recently and have produced a few recent videos on the subject, including a review of an original classic Porsche 356, which was hilarious fun to drive after the conversion and even kept its manual gearbox. There are some compelling reasons to do this, especially with some cars which while, well, the drivetrains were not necessarily that great to start with. There's one in particular, one of my own favorites that I'm thinking of, that I might feel would be an ideal candidate for this. If you can guess what that is, name it in the comments below. So there you go. That's my top selection of EVs for, to, to buy in 2022. Now let me know what your favorite EVs were in the comments. Catch you all again soon in the next video. A big shout out and thanks to Jay Williams over at Air Technic who are my top tier sponsors. Check them out for exhaust, brakes, suspension and even body kits. Also, much appreciation to my tier 4 sponsors Muhammad Ali Umaid and Tom Conway Gordon. And of course all of these other guys who have joined me on the Patreon. Without their support I can't be creating the content that I am doing. Perhaps you can join them. Head over to patreon.com forward slash brown car guy. Even if you can't do that make sure you're subscribing and sharing this channel which of course is youtube.com forward slash brown car guy also subscribe to browncarguy.com and follow me on all the socials just search for my hashtag which of course is hashtag brown car guy